Today, I've got something a little bit different. This is the Sofern ST10 clip-on mini flashlight or a clip flashlight, basically. And this thing is rated up to 1,000 lumens. And on top of that, you've got flood lighting here at the side. You've got a red light. You've got this built-in magnet and clip here, of course, on the back. And the most important thing of all is that it has a replaceable battery. It's got a 14500 cell, which pretty much you don't see on any other clip light at the moment, unless you know one. And this is great for pretty much anyone who wants a small flashlight that does a bunch of different jobs. And I'd say this is one of the most versatile mini flashlights that I've used so far. Okay, little demo of the light. There's two switches on the side. The first switch here operates the beam the front beam, the main LED, you've also got a turbo mode, that 1000 lumen mode, and you've got this secondary switch that activates the side light, so you can see, different modes and a turbo, turn off, and you've also got, if you press and hold, a nice red mode. So let's have a look at what you get in the box, and so fern of course, include a battery as always. This is a 14500 cell rated at 900 milliamp hours. And you can see it does have a USB-C port there as well. And so far, uh, this is the box anyway. So you can see just some of the specifications there. You do get an instruction manual. And there are a few little accessories here in the box as well. You get a couple of spare o-rings as you can see here you get a lanyard that's something i don't really use personally and you get a usb-c charging cable Alrighty, so here's a little close-up of the sofa and st10 and overall the build quality is excellent at this price point it's made of aluminium alloy machining feels tight and the anodized finish also feels high quality it's applied evenly there's no rough spots or sharp spots anywhere and kind of feels slightly grippy. It's not completely slippery, but there is some, I don't know if you call it knurling, but some grooves here on the side. So when you hold the light, it doesn't completely just sort of slip out of your hands. And the ST10 is rated IPX6. So you're going to be okay in the rain. And for, I guess, submerging it for short periods of time. And it's also impact resistant to a meter. So the Sofern ST10 has a couple of buttons here on the side. And... As you can see here, you've got the, the top one, which activates the main, I don't know if you'd call it a spot beam, but the longer range beam, and this one here that activates the two side LEDs. So I really like how they've separated them out, just makes it a lot easier. Rather than having one button that operates everything, you've got to remember how many clicks and things like that it just becomes a bit annoying, in my opinion. And yeah, you've got this clip here on the back, which feels really, really sturdy. It's got a bit of rubber underneath there as well so when you when it hits the body it doesn't scratch it up you've also got a strong magnet on the tail sticks to most metal surfaces pretty well no onboard charging unfortunately though you need to charge that battery separately but a uh, good thing is that the sd10 also takes normal alkaline and nickel metal hydride double a cells so you can see here on the side, there's this kind of TIR lens that has these kind of grooves here on the front. And yeah, this produces a kind of floody sort of beam. And you've got a red LED rated at 660 nanometers, which is a deep red. I prefer this to 620 nanometers, which kind of looks a bit orangey. And the head LED appears to be using some kind of Fresnel lens and it reminds me of maybe the SC... Oh, I can't remember, what was it the SC32, I believe? And Sofern state that they're using a TN3535 LED in here. Both of these lenses appear to be made of plastic. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the UI, show you how the light is used. So this main light here on top, just single click to turn on and off. Okay, and you can also double press to get into turbo straight away or while the light is on. If you double press again, you have this hidden beacon mode in there. Now, what you can do is when the light is on as well, just long press and you cycle low, medium and high. And of course, you can go to turbo at any time. There is also a moonlight mode. So if you turn off, just press and hold. There we go, that hidden moonlight mode in there. 
Now the side switch to activate the main white LED, it's just one click. So kind of like on and off thing. And both of these modes have a mode memory as well. So just remember what you've left it in last. So I've got it in low, turn off, turn back on. You can see it memorizes that. So yeah, basically low, medium, high, that will cycle and then double press again for turbo. And there is no moonlight mode for the side light mode because if you press and hold that's how you access that red led and uh, basically to cycle modes it's just a single press so low medium and high and if you double click while on the red mode you will get this flashy mode and finally if you triple click any of these buttons you can lock the light and triple click again to unlock. I like that there's a battery indicator here on the side, so this will gradually turn to red and blink red when the battery becomes depleted. Okay, so I ran a bunch of ceiling bounce tests with the Sofern ST10, and this is the main lighting mode, the spot mode, I suppose, turbo 1000 lumens, and you can see you get two and a half minutes of runtime before the light steps down to roughly 30 percent output. This is a second ceiling bounce test that I ran with the side light on the turbo mode and you can see it's rated at 500 lumens. Get just over three minutes of runtime before the light steps down to about 50 percent output. Here you can see a final ceiling bounce test that I ran on the side light red high mode and that's 100 lumens and you get just over a minute of runtime before the light steps down to about 40%. Here are some readings that I took with my Oppo Light Master Pro and the main one I wanted to point out was the turbo mode, the turbo spot mode that was 98 meters and you can pause the video to check out all of those readings. So some considerations if you're thinking of getting the Sofern ST 10, so the turbo step down is pretty generous as you can see or had seen in the ceiling bounce tests, but you only get just over an hour runtime on this mode and that's an expected trade-off given that you know it's a pretty small flashlight and it runs off a 14500 cell, only 900 milliamp hours, but yeah it's also great as it can accept a normal double A battery, you know either alkaline or nickel metal hydride. And yeah, it's just as thin as some other clip lights. And in fact, some clip lights I've seen out there have a battery capacity of maybe 400 milliamp hours. So you still get quite a lot more battery capacity and runtime compared to some of those other lights. The second consideration is that I didn't manage to hit that 144 meter range on the specifications for this main beam and I measured that twice with my Opal Lightmaster Pro. This isn't a deal breaker for me, just something to keep in mind. I think 100 meters is still decent for a clip light. The third consideration is both of these lenses appear to be made of acrylic plastic, not sure exactly what, so there is a scratch risk, but you know, like I said before, the light is designed for more, I guess, short to mid-range use anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you mark up the lens. The fourth consideration is that there's no onboard USB-C charging, and that isn't the best for beginners, but at least, you, you know, you've got a 14500 cell in there that has a USB-C port, but yeah, if you're going to need you know, if you want to have spares, just make sure you, you buy ones that have an, an inbuilt port, or you have to charge the 14500 cell separately in a in an external charger. And finally, the last consideration is the form factor. You know, it's quite unique with this clip here on the back. And yeah, you can, I guess, clip it into your pocket as well. But the way that it sits in your pocket, it, it's probably a little thicker than it needs to be, okay? Because that lens, you see the bezel, or, or I mean, if you call it a bezel, it does pop out a little bit. So some of you might be better suited off to a usual double A flashlight with a pocket clip. But yeah, Sofen make a few of those as well. I think this one is really unique. And I like that it's incorporating these various different LEDs. Overall, the Sofern ST10 is a super versatile mini clip light, and you get long range, flood, got this red mode, and of course, the clip here in the back, nice chunky clip, magnet, dual battery, and it's just something cool that you can clip onto your pocket, clip onto the front of your bag, you know, use that as like a right angled front facing flashlight also an edc flashlight if you carry it around in your pocket just using it normally like this and it's pretty light only weighs 49 grams so you know it's not meant to replace a dedicated spotlight or a headlamp but for everyday tasks camping emergencies or 
you know, just having one light, they can pretty much do it all. I think this is one of the best bang for buck compact flashlights out there. And if you want maximum performance, make sure you pair it with that 14500 cell battery and you'll be set. You know, otherwise a typical double A will work fine. And I think that's going to make this a great gift for friends and family. But what do you guys think of the Sophone ST10? Let me know down below in the comments. Is this what you expected out of Sophone's first clip lights? And if you have questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll get back to you. If you enjoy the video, do me a favor, click the like button and share it. Share the video with someone who might be interested. It just helps me to get my channel out to more people. And if you want to see more flashlight reviews, keep up to date with the latest flashlight news. Make sure you subscribe. This is the Sophone ST10 on a kind of closer up range. And this is the spot beam, main beam, I guess, low, medium, high, and turbo. Decent amount of flood, even on the spot mode. Um, and this is the side mode. Okay, so low, medium, high, double press for turbo. And let's go on to the red mode. Ooh, it's pretty powerful. So low, medium, high. All right, I'll go for a little walk. Sofern ST10 and I'll start this on the lowest mode you can't really see that this is for the spot beam and I'll step up so that's low medium high and it just cycles low medium high and still kind of tinting the center of that field a little bit but this is turbo wow yeah not bad for a little clip light and I can see it kind of tinting Maybe just tinting the trees in the back a little. Uh, or the whites of the trunks anyway. Difficult to see here on camera. But the beam profile pretty much goes all the way into your peripherals. And the spill starts almost at your feet. Another 60 centimeters or so in front of you. And from my testing, I believe I've got a couple of minutes of runtime on this turbo mode, which was pretty impressive, 1000 lumens. But you know, even the medium, medium setting or the high setting, medium high here, as you can see, that's sustainable. One step down, so pretty decent. That's a walking light, and yeah, for a little extra throw, it's actually pretty good. But I would say it's definitely more of a, yeah, it's still more of a floody light, but with a large central, uh, well, most of the light located in the center of the, the beam. Now, let's swap over now to the side LED. You can't activate both of them at the same time, by the way. You can either have the side or the front one on. So low, medium, high, low, medium, high, and turbo little bit brighter I wonder if these are the same LEDs but they're just on the different lenses because uh, the tints actually look pretty similar that's the front one 
and this is the side one here low medium high appear to maybe be the same LED and double press for turbo and I do like how the red motor is like pretty powerful as well let's uh, let me get into that red mode low oops hang on it's low medium high so it's tinting those little shrubs in the front which not many of my red LED flashlights uh, can do I'll go for a little walk and I'll just play around with the floody modes first and then at the end I'll switch to the long range one.